it's a heck of a lot harder for men over the age of 35 to lose belly fat. The same principles apply. Calories in versus calories out. Create a deficit, move more, eat less. But we need to tweak the strategies and tactics because I doubt your body works like the well-oiled machine that it was in your 20s. Your metabolism's probably slowed down. I doubt you have as much energy and I expect your workouts feel harder too if you're even going to the gym. And then there's the responsibilities because I expect you have a busier and more stressful life. A mortgage to pay, a partner, kids, maybe even a couple of pets. So you have less time and a body that's not playing ball. It's not ideal, is it? But you don't need to worry because today I'm going to walk you through the exact step-by-step -step strategy that I use to lose 45 pounds in just four months. The very same strategy which has worked wonders for plenty of my clients over the age of 35. The first thing we need to do is change your mindset because your mindset dictates your habits and your habits combined form your lifestyle. The lifestyle that you're currently living isn't getting you the results that you want. So it'd be kind of dumb to assume that we can continue down the same path but expect better results. No, we need to change it. But this is where a lot of people go wrong. They believe they can think themselves into positive action, but it's the other way around. You act your way into positive thinking. For you to obtain a better reality in the future, you essentially have to start acting like the person that you want to become now. So that means you need to start thinking, acting, believing, talking and walking like the future man that you want to become. The way I teach my clients to do this is by adopting something that I call the superhero mindset model. And it's very simple. Think about who your hero was growing up. It could be fictional or real. So it could be James Bond, Batman, Superman, but equally it could be Mike Tyson, Tiger Woods, or Michael Jordan. Now, as you go through your day, every decision that you're faced with, before you act subconsciously the way that you've been acting up until now, you stop. And you think, how would my hero act? Would they eat that food? How would they respond to that question? Would they go to the gym tonight or make another excuse? And you do this for every single decision. And quite quickly, you'll realize that it's probably not one thing that's got you to the point you're at today. It's the compounding effect of several bad habits that you don't even realize you've got. So first up, you want to change your mindset. Now, with your newfound mindset, we want to set you up with a series of simple, non-negotiable habits that you're going to do every single day, come rain or shine, whether you feel like it, or not. First up, your nutrition. So like I said at the beginning of the video, the same principles apply to you as they would do to a 25 year old guy. So we need to start by putting you in a calorie deficit where you're burning more calories than you're eating. But what we're going to change is the way that we manage that deficit. But before I go into that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let me quickly explain what a calorie deficit is just in case you're brand new to the concept. So a calorie deficit, as I just said, is where you are burning more calories than you are eating or drinking. And this forces your body to use the store energy which is stored as fat as fuel but for you to know how many calories you should be eating to create a calorie deficit the first thing we need to do is calculate something called your maintenance calorie number very simply put it's the number of calories you would need to eat if you just wanted to maintain your current weight and level of body fat the simplest way to do this is to take your body weight in pounds not in kilos in pounds and multiply it by 14. Now that won't give you a precise number, but it's a quick and easy solution that's gonna give you a pretty accurate estimation in the next 10 seconds. If you want a more precise number, scroll down and click the first link in the description and I'll send you personalized nutrition targets for free. Once we know your maintenance calorie number, we can create that calorie deficit. Now at this stage, what most coaches, personal trainers, and nutritionists will advise you to do is subtract 500 from that maintenance number you've just calculated and eat that many calories every single day. So let's say your maintenance calorie number came out at 2,500, they would advise you to eat 2,000 calories every day. And the reason they all say that is because if you can stick to a 500 calorie deficit every single day for seven days for a week, you're gonna lose a pound of fat. And that's because there's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. 500 calorie deficit multiplied by seven days equals 3,500. This is what a pound of fat looks like, by the way. As you can see, it's pretty substantial. Now, while I do think losing about a pound of fat a week is sustainable for most guys, this approach isn't what I recommend for my clients, particularly the guys who I work with who are over the age of 35. That's because I think it's flawed for two reasons. Firstly, it doesn't give you any room for failure. There's no flexibility. It assumes that you act and live like a robot, that every single day will be exactly the same. But we know that life isn't like that with the stressful job, the partner, the kids, 
and who could forget the goldfish? And secondly, because it encourages you to be pretty restrictive with your food. Eating 500 calories less every single day is like cutting out the whole meal. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to be fueled. I want you to be energized. So this is what I suggest my clients do instead. Firstly, we're going to take your calorie deficit number. So in that example, it was 2000. And then we're going to multiply that by seven because there's seven days in a week. So in this example, 2000 multiplied by seven is 14,000. Now you have a weekly calorie allowance, a budget if you like. And just like how you manage your own finances, you can now decide how and when you spend your calories on a bigger time horizon, which not only gives you a lot more freedom and flexibility, it also gives you room for error. You can plan ahead, which is always a good thing to do, meaning you can have low calorie days and high calorie days, and you don't have to be perfect every single day. That means if you mess up one day, which you probably will because you're a human, not a robot, let's say it's a Wednesday, you don't have to throw in the towel and think, Oh well, diet starts Monday. That habit, that approach is exactly why so many people fail with this stuff. So that's the first thing I get my clients to do. But secondly, rather than cutting out an entire meal and trying to eat 500 calories less every single day, whether it's a Monday, a Thursday, or a Sunday, I'm gonna suggest that you eat 250 calories less and move 250 calories more. Because if we move more, if we live a more active lifestyle, we increase our maintenance calorie number and it means we can attack our deficit from both sides. And if you're eating 250 calories less and moving 250 calories more, you're still creating that 500 calorie deficit, which means you're still gonna lose a pound of fat a week. Now, before I go on to tell you how I would recommend that you burn those extra 250 calories every day, let me just give you a couple of points around your nutrition that's gonna make your diet easier and far simpler. Firstly, if you're serious about losing this belly fat, you need to know that you're eating the right amount. And that means tracking your calories. I know it's tedious, I know it's boring, but trust me, it's well worth it. And even though there's a long list of cons to doing it, the one benefit outweighs them all because this habit has the power to change your life. And I don't say that lightly. In fact, being honest, it's probably the number one game-changing habits that I get my clients to do. The challenge is it's the ultimate form of delayed gratification because all of the friction is at the beginning and all of the benefit is at the end. But I've never, never met anybody who regrets doing it after eight weeks. Because here's the thing, you might think that you have to do it for the rest of your life, but you don't. On average, I would say eight weeks of consistent tracking is all it takes. Eight weeks to be able to see food like Neo sees the matrix. Eight weeks to build a better relationship with your food. Eight weeks out of the 4,000 that you're going to live, which is 0.2% of your life. To change it for the better, permanently. I think that's a pretty good trade, don't you? Calorie tracking removes the guesswork. But more importantly than that, it removes the emotion. It shines a light on the bit people struggle with the most, food discipline. If you're not tracking your calories, stop dancing around the hard work because here's a hard truth that you need to hear. Nobody flukes this. There's a very clear correlation between the people who track their calories and get the result. So there's really only one question you have to ask yourself. Do I really want the result? Okay, calorie tracking motivation aside, here's the second pointer. One of the best things that I've done for my own nutrition in the last few years is to base it on principles rather than worrying about the exact detail. Now, to avoid contradicting myself, I want to be clear. I still recommend that you track your calories for the first eight weeks. But after that, I think you'll find relaxing on the intricate detail and basing your diet, your nutrition on these principles is going to be far more sustainable. In total, I base my diet on five principles. I always make sure it's balanced, getting plenty of each of the three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat, because they all play an essential role in our health. I make sure it's omnivorous, getting my protein from lean meats, fish, eggs, and dairy, as well as my fiber from fruit and veg. And I also make sure that it's mostly made up of whole food, so it's nutrient dense. Very little ultra processed stuff or junk food. But at the same time, I like to make sure that my diet is quick and simple. So I have the same breakfast every single day, and then I have five meals that I rotate throughout the week for lunches and dinners, all of which I can prepare from scratch in 20 minutes or less. And last but probably most important, I always make sure that my diet is enjoyable because that way it never actually feels like I'm on a diet. And I do that by sprinkling in some healthy snacks and treats every day. Now treats and healthy snacks are going to be different for everybody, but for me, it's Fanta Lemon Zero Sugar, which has about five calories in it, a couple of squares of dark chocolate after lunch, and then another couple after my dinner. I genuinely enjoy everything that I eat, and that should be your goal for your diet too. But listen, it will take some time for you to construct your perfect diet, but it's well worth the effort. Because once you find what works, 
it's going to be effortless. I've done a whole other video on my diet where I break it down in full. If you want to watch that one, stick around to the end and I'll give you a link. And the last thing I want to say about your nutrition, but arguably just as important, is to make sure that you're drinking lots of water and staying hydrated. Now listen, I'm 100% sure I'm not the first guy in the world to tell him to do this, but so many guys struggle with drinking enough water and I think it's for two reasons. Firstly, it's just because they're not focused on it. And secondly, it's because no one's actually taken the time to sit them down and explain why drinking a lot of water and staying hydrated is just so powerful and so beneficial. Water is like your body's secondary energy system. Think of your calories like the petrol you put in a car, but think of the water like the oil, like the lubricant. You need both to make sure the car is going to get you from A to B. And most people don't realize just how sensitive our brains are. But if you're just one to two percent dehydrated, your brain starts to shut down non-essential processes in your body. Now what that looks like in real life is that you will feel lethargic. And we all know what happens when you feel lethargic. Suddenly, it becomes a lot more appealing to sit on the sofa in your pants and watch Netflix. And what are you doing when you're sat in your pants on the sofa watching Netflix? Well, nothing. And that's the problem. You get less done. And when you get less done, you burn less calories. But in contrast, if you keep yourself hydrated, you're gonna have all day energy, focus, mental clarity. Because at the end of the day, every single cell in your body needs water. When people ask me how much water they should be drinking, which might be your next question, the answer I give is normally more. And whilst that might seem a little bit facetious, the reason I give that answer is because I know that most people just aren't drinking enough. And the great thing about water is that there's no real upper limit, or at least no real upper limit that you need to worry about hitting. But okay, if you want a precise number, I would aim to drink three liters every day. If you do that, you'll be doing yourself a big favor. You probably have no idea how much water you're actually drinking though. So the first thing I'd recommend you do is a bit of an audit. And drinking three liters every day really isn't that challenging. I drink three liters of water by 9 a.m. every single morning because I'm in the habit of doing so. And I'm not saying that to flex, I'm saying that because if I can do it by 9 a.m., I'm pretty sure you can do it by 9 p.m. I wake up at 6 a.m. and have 500 milliliters of water with an electrolyte powder mixed in. Then I walk to the gym at 7 a.m. and I take a two liter bottle of water just like this one with me. On the way to the gym, during my workout and on the walk home from the gym, I will make sure that this whole bottle is done. And then when I get home, I will have another 500 milliliters of water with my post-workout protein shake. And there you have it, three liters of water by 9 a.m. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Whew. That is your nutrition. I've given you a ton to think about there and hopefully some useful stuff. Now we need to talk about burning those extra 250 calories a day and you're gonna do that by walking. And this is what works so well for Paul here. Paul's a former client of mine who has a very busy job and two kids. He lost 30 pounds in just three months. Yeah, he was in a calorie deficit and yeah, he was working out two to three times a week from home. But what really moved the needle for him and helped him to lose so much weight in such a short space of time was his step count. Paul's a keen golfer, and he recognized he could pair his love of golf with his fitness goals. So he would regularly hit 18,000 steps a day by getting on the course after work and at weekends. But here's the thing, you don't have to walk 18,000 steps a day, and you certainly don't have to love golf. Paul's an outlier, but he's a great example of what a difference your step count can make. Walking is such an underrated exercise. I mean, if we can even call it an exercise. And it's a high leverage activity because of all the amazing benefits that you get from doing it. And you can multitask while you're doing it. And if you're walking at a brisk pace, you'll do about a thousand steps every eight minutes. So that means if you walk about an hour a day, 64 minutes to be precise, you'll get about 8,000 steps. But here's the cool part. That one habit is gonna help you to burn an additional three to 400 calories every day. And if you do it at a brisk pace, you'll also be working your zone two cardio, which is great for your heart health and circulation. Probably my favorite thing about walking though, is that it helps you to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Have you ever wondered why you feel less stressed and even more creative when you get outside and go for a walk? That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in, changing your environment, getting outside, fresh air, and maybe even some sunlight. It's not sexing because you're not sweating and you can't see the change on the outside straight away. But trust me, it's doing wonders for you on the inside. Use it as an opportunity to listen to an audiobook or a podcast. Stick a playlist on, phone a friend, or switch all your Zoom meetings to walking meetings. Because listen, it's been four years. Everybody's sick of Zoom. And here's the thing, not all of your walking has to be purposeful. You'll do about 2,000 steps a day just existing. Whether it's commuting, walking around the house, gardening, playing with your kids having sex with your partner. So really, all you need to consciously think about 
is doing 6,000 steps a day. That could be a 45 minute walk at the start of the day with a coffee to wake you up or 45 minutes at the end of the day to de-stress you. Either way, sounds pretty good to me. Listen, losing belly fat ain't easy. But if you do what I've taught you through today, if you create the deficit by eating 250 calories less and walking for 45 minutes so you burn those additional 250 calories, you will lose one pound of fat every single week like clockwork. And the best part is because you're doing it this way, it won't even feel like you're trying. I'll admit, it might not be the sexiest way. It's certainly no rocky cutscene, but it works. It's realistic and it's sustainable. And honestly, what would you prefer? Some crazy crash diet where you have to eat like a rabbit for 12 weeks and work out like a maniac? Or this, it's far more important to be going in the right direction than to be going fast. Three months of this is 12 to 14 pounds. Six months is 24 to 26. Six months might seem like an eternity right now, but it's only 0.6% of your whole life. Anyway, listen, I'm gonna leave the video here for today, but we haven't even touched on the workout I'd recommend you do or the other healthy habits. So if you want me to do another video on that, let me know in the comments. And as promised, here's the link to the video I talked about earlier where I break down my diet in full. So go ahead and watch that one now.